Hey, 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 my name is Polishlinks and welcome back to some Sakura Gamer looking for Suki. Hey, Suki, are you in here? Just a second. I wait in the hallway, arms folded. I hear Rustin coming from inside Suki's room and then she opens the door. Hey, hi. <coughs> She's smiling brightly. So brightly, in fact, it's almost blinding. I avert my eyes. D don't you have any shame? You, you aren't the one to talk, right? <sighs> now why do you want me to have a silly thing like that? <clears throat> you could at least apologize, you know. <coughs> For what? For splashing me with water. Oh, is that uh, why you're wearing your underwear? Only? Yes, I don't have any other clean clothes. That's a pain, but it's not my fault. It's quite literally your fault. Suki pouts. Phew. So, did you come here to scold me? Is that it? Well. <clears throat> ah, you're so cruel. How could you bully a pure innocent maiden like me? Suki blinks at me winsomely from beneath her eyelashes. They are very full and thick. Well. If scolding me would make you feel better, go ahead. I will accept any hardship you see fit to bestow. What? I offer myself to you, Nekohime. Please use my body as wish to satiate your wrath. Only please. Blink, blink. <laughs> it should be wink, wink, but... Be gentle with me, alright? It's my first time. I, uh, it, it, it would, uh, it would, it would be my first time too. Oh, how lovely. Then let's make each other feel good together. Suki takes a step towards me. My heart pounds. Would you pour in pleasure just for me? She bears a strand of hair on my cheek. While you desecrate my flesh? What? Uh, what, 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 what? She's so close I can't think straight. And she smells good, it's almost bewitching. You can do whatever you want to me, anything you like. Her eyes shimmer mischievously. You're so quiet and reserved, but you know what they say? Her finger turns a lies against my cheek, it burns. It's always the quiet ones. Suzuki, please. I squeeze my eyes shut and push her away. Suki stumbles backwards, but she doesn't fall. She wants to catch her bounce at the last moment. I'm sorry. I was just playing around, but didn't you like it? <coughs> I didn't like it at all. I liked it, but... I want to click. I want to click, but I have to click. No, I didn't! Not at all? Not one bit. It's kind of intrusive. And anyway, I am. Um, I actually want to have a serious conversation with you. Really? That sounds so boring. It might be boring. There are a few things that need to be said. Deadlines for one thing, and professionalism for another. Will you let me into your room? I want to talk about this like adults. <clears throat> well, if you really want to. I suppose I can deny the invitation of a cured girl. Oh, okay. Okay, that room looks kinda empty, to be honest. <coughs> Suki pushes open the door of her bedroom and gestures inside. Welcome, fair maiden. Please enjoy pillaging these unexplored lands to your heart's content. Thank you. I look around Suki's bedroom. I look around, and I throw. Her bedroom is even more sparsely furnished than I imagined. There are all the basic essentials one needs for a bedroom, a bed, a wardrobe, and a desk. Finally, someone in those games is able to afford a freaking clock that has indicators. My god, this calls for some celebration. Let's go drinking tonight. 
<coughs> uh, Suki's computer and tablet rest on her desk, but that's all. There is nothing that tells me another human being lives in here. No decorations on the wall. No books or games or magazines, and no beauty products lying on the desk. Looking around this room makes me feel too... lonely. If Suki's bedroom is this inhospitable, uh, it's no wonder she'd want to escape, stretch her legs, relax in the sunshine for a while. Now I feel like I'm unreasonable for getting so angry at her. But you have more... more what? More stuff? Suki flops down to the bed, the mattress sinks beneath her way for a few moments before poofing back up to its original size. She dies with a strand of her hair. It's black, like oyster sauce, and contrasts threateningly with her white skin. I do have more stuff, but most of that is back in the shrine. Where you used to live? She nods. I'm a little sad, I guess. I had to leave it behind a bunch of stuff, like half my clothes, and my expensive makeup, and all my shoes, but... I don't want to go back there in a hurry. Didn't you tell your family you were leaving? I couldn't tell my family. They'd freak out, especially my grandmother. She's so stuffy. I never even be able to walk around the shrine like this. Like what? Oh! But my words are in my throat. Suki has stripped off her. All right, you are the one that actually has the best underwear. Thing. But you know what? Alright, those two have good un great underwear. Clover's underwear was pretty plain, but those two <coughs> me like. Anyway, Suki has stripped off her shirt and pants, revealing some very cute pink frilly underwear. I glance at her confused. She shrugs. What? It's hot! I guess. Plus, you're wearing your underwear. Why can't I wear mine? Point taken. Not that I'm wearing my underwear because I want to wear it, eh? Idiot. Oh, but where are my manners? Take a seat? You don't need to tell me to take a seat in my own house. This is my room. You haven't paid on the rent yet. <laughs> I guess you found out, huh? And Clover said she'd cover for me. I'm not as stupid as you might think. I don't think you're stupid at all, Nekohima. You don't. On the contrary, I think you're incredibly smart. Even if you do pour like a god when you get patted on the head. Th that was just a one-off. Yeah, yeah. With a flash face, I sit myself down beside Suki on her bed. Well, I say it's her bed, but she's actually using Clover's old bedding and the pillow covers. Nothing about her the room. Really belongs to Suki. Other than the, the tablet and the computer. And maybe a few items of clothing hanging in the wardrobe. Isn't it lonely being here? What do you mean? You said you can go back to your so see your family, and you don't have that much stuff. It can feel very welcome. Don't worry about me, I can function just fine. Having stuff makes life comfortable, uh, sure. And I really do miss all my primers and toners. But I make do. I think you don't need those. I have to make to do. I much I much rather have my freedom than my makeup. I mean, technically without the makeup, she looks great anyway. Why would you use makeup then? Freedom. Hmm. You might have got it already, and I don't know how much Clovers told you, but I really hate being a shrine maiden. Uh, I thought you were a shrine maiden in training. It's the same thing. I'm supposed to inherit this run when my mother retires, but she's always so busy. It fell upon my grandma to show me how everything's done. I spent most of my life under grandma's strict supervision. She's in her 80s, but she still has a lot of life left in her. She's as strong as a bear and as stubborn as a mountain goat. Whenever I was late getting up in the mornings or didn't brush my hair properly or talk back to her, she would slap me. Really? She slapped you? Not with her hand, but with her ruler. She kept a wooden ruler with her at all the times, so she could correct my behavior. Well, and it didn't turn out too well. I used to be, bratty, to be a bratty kid, run around the shrine a lot, and when exploring, I'd go off on my own and I wouldn't come back for hours. 
but my grandmother hated it. Hmm. Okay, for for being curious of the world, that doesn't make any sense at all. What is wrong with your grandmother? She hated you when I tore my clothes, or got my shoes muddy, or got leaves and twigs caught in my hair. That's what kids do. Actually, that's something I wouldn't uh, hit a kid for at all. When they throw a tantrum for no reason, that's kind of understandable. But for something like that, never. I would go on the journey with the kid. Why not? Exploring the worst is fun. Anyway, she told me I looked totally unpresentable like a little demon, and then she hit me. She hit me and while she was hitting me, she ran through a list of all my faults and flaws and told me to apologize. She was the toughest, most terrifying instructor there ever is. Didn't your parents mind? They were too busy attending to the shrine. I don't know if they noticed, and even if they did, they wouldn't have intervened. My grandma is quite frightening, everyone is afraid of her. I shall go to that shrine and say to her what I think about her, can I? I'm not really afraid of old people. But I thought your mother ran the shrine. It technically belongs to her, but my grandpa still has influence in the day-to-day -day management, unfortunately. You can say what you want about her, but she's very organized, efficient too, and she's good with money. Mostly because she's such a miser, but I ruined my nose in confusion. That does not happen. What well, does it? I met your grandmother when I went to the shrine, and at the time I thought she was a sweet old lady. She was perfectly normal in her plain kimono and her white, two socks and wooden sandals. She wore her grey hair in a bun and her had her glasses on a string around her neck. Her hands were withered and ropey, and her dark eyes were watery, covered in a fine film of old age. But she was spirited enough and talked with me companionably while I walked on her computer. Well, you know. People don't have one face, right? There are those fake faces as well. She even made me a mug of green tea and some delicious strawberry daifuku. Her strawberry daifuku dust tasted so good. I'm sure she can be a bad person, not if she made suicide. That's a w weird way to f decide if people are good or bad. It would come back to sweets with you, Nekohime. Suki pressed the tip of my nose, she's smiling. Sweets are a good way to judge person moral fiber. Oh, they are not. Oh, really? Yeah, only pure-hearted people can make delicious sweets. Dopped. I can define the hearts of men through their homemade cooking and that strawberry rifle was crazy delicious. <laughs> In before it was Suki who did that. Then you should be pleased to know I was the one who made that strawberry daifuku. You yeah. <laughs> I stared at Suki. A few seconds ago I understood the basic of the numerals. The sky is blue, the world is round. There goes around the sun. Now, however, I'm not so sure. But your grandpa, she said it was handmade. And it was handmade. That wasn't a lie, but she never said her hands made it, did she? I, well, uh, I'm guess not. Classic Japanese sweets were the only sweets I was ever allowed to eat at the shrine. I got really interested in sweets because of that, and I started learning how to make them myself. I'm not that good in the kitchen. But if there is bean balls mochi, matcha, or azuki beans, I'm an expert. Well, uh, uh marry me? <laughs> I glanced at my fix. This whole while, that delicious strawberry knife I ate, that was so filled with love, that was actually made by Suki. This loud obnoxious girl who lounged around the house in various states of unrest and sprayed me with a jet of cold water a few hours ago. I can hardly believe it. I know looks can be deceiving. After all, I live with Clover. At there are degrees. My grandpa is very nice and personal to strangers, but she's all been hard as with her own family. She told you fake around strangers. I don't think she does it to be mean. She says it's tough love. She thinks you have to be cruel to be kind. What? 
but I got sick of it. Understandable. I couldn't even ask her to back off. If I did, it would just make her hit me, or maybe I'd have to go without dinner. Suki frowns, she looks lost in thought. Maybe being a shrine maiden wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for my grandma. If she'd been a little bit nicer, perhaps I could have stuck it out. But she wasn't. She was a horrible old witch when I was younger, and she's still a horrible old witch now. Is that why you told her about the rice? Uh, <laughs> it was just an act of petty revenge, really. I did a lot of stuff like that to her, just to pay her back. I'd hide her indoor slippers, or I'd put spicy sauce into her miso soup in the mornings. For a while that was enough, but when she found out about her computer, she got so angry. She said I was a wicked child who had no respect for her others. I told her she was a bitter old woman who wanted to ruin my life. And then she told me to leave. Like it's my fault she believed me when I fed her those lies about purifying her computer. If she half, had half a brain, she could have looked it up online herself. Isn't it obvious putting rice in the D drive will cause problems eventually? She must have believed because she trusted you. Well, I guess. She was a weird old woman, but I think she loved being her own name. But being blocked isn't always enough, you know. I know. I know more than I would like to admit. What? What? Flashback. You can't join a club, Sayo! It would be nothing more than distraction! Why do you need to invite friends over her? You should be studying. Of course we need to go to the crime school. How else will you get into a good university? We just want you to keep your options open, honey. You might resent us for it now, but sooner or later you will understand. We're doing this because we love you. Yeah. Yeah. Love isn't always enough. Exactly. Somebody might say they love you and they could be telling the truth too. They might really truly really adore you from the bottom of your heart, but some types of love can be toxic. My grandmother wanted to turn me into a perfect doll who would obey her each and every command. She thought straight me away from my freedom was the best thing for me. I disagreed. And that's why you come here. Came here. Suki nuts. That's right. Do you think your grandpa misses you? Maybe. But she should have thought about that before she yelled at me to get out. I'd rather die than go back to the shrine. So, our visual novel has to be a smash hit. I'll do everything I can to turn that into my dream. Uh, my dream into a reality. As long as I have you and Clover by my side, I can do it! As long as I have you by my side, I can do it. Oh, for fuck's sake, please don't say it out loud. And as long as I'm Clover, I can do it too. <laughs> There's a spirit. Oh, she didn't notice. And um, I glassed my lap shyly. I know you're being serious about this now. Short try be a little more lenient. Seeing the deadlines and getting things done is more than I think it's important to have fun too. Exactly. If we don't have, fun, have fun making the visual novel, our customers won't have fun reading it. Fun. It's not a word that's weighed and heavy in my life as of. Well, ever. I was too busy going to grammar school. Too busy studying. Too busy trying to impress my parents. Then I was too busy working. But maybe I should take a break every once in a while. I think I deserve it. Suki and I both deserve it. We've been trying... Achieving a knock bond. We've been trying too hard for far too long. Hey Suki! How did you get Nekohima to agree to this? Oh, it was quite simple actually. Suki's my Coquettishly, her fingers pressed together at her front. We had an earnest heart to heart, and we came to a mutual understanding. Now I wonder what kind of heart to heart that was. Are you sure it wasn't a mouth to mouth instead? Clover! I turned to prod Clover to the side, but she's too quick for me. She darts away, sticking out her tongue. <laughs> sorry, sorry! So I'm annoyed at her. Clover raised a good point. I have to wonder why I agreed to this myself. My bikini is an old, frilly thing I fished out of the back of the drawer. I don't know why I even have a bikini. I'm not exactly the sun and sea type. I was so busy with work, I didn't have enough free time to take trips to the beach. 
And even if I had, I would have preferred to sit inside. The only time I want is a time bestowed upon me by the flicking screen of a computer. I can feel the sunlight against my skin. It's baking me like a potato. It doesn't feel good. I can't remember the last time I exposed this much flesh to the harsh and forgiving light of day. If this keeps up, I might turn to a dust and blow away. My remains will be scattered on the winds. Rest in peace. But Clover and Suki don't seem to mind. They both lie down the grass, slowly turning their bodies beneath the sun. Join us, Nekohime! This feels great! I, 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 I'm not sure. Don't be so hesitant! The sunshine is good for you! But what if I melt? You won't melt, silly! And if you do? I mean, I, and if you do, I'll help to the Clover to the writing and the programming for our visual novel. What? Me? To the writing? You can't! She has no sense of pacing! And her characterization leaves a lot to be desired! Oh, uh, how did you know that? We used to roleplay a little back in the day. We did meet on an RP form. We tried to head with Basteko, he always got mad at me and said I was doing it wrong! How can you roleplay wrong? She just wasn't very convincing. Her world building was flat and her characters were inconsistent. So, you were hard to please, uh, even as a kid. Well, I, I'm sorry for having standards. <laughs> it's okay, Nekohime. I'll keep far, far away from Magnum Opus. It, it's not like I'm taking this story too seriously. But I am. More than I would like to admit. I've grown quite protective of this visual novel over the last few days, even if it is a silly idea. It must be because I'm stubborn. When I start writing a script, I want to finish it all my way. After doing some research, I learned a lot of visual novels are actually written by teams or two, three, sometimes up to four or five people. Where one writer handles the common route and a couple of the key characters routes, while the remaining routes are dive dived up between other writers. It's probably the most practical way to go about it. You have to write a script over 1 million characters long? Yes, some visual novels are ridiculous huge, and you have a tight deadline, you need to get other hands on deck. Or you know, you just say... You just don't reveal the date of the... Uh, you know, release, and say... The game will be released when it's done. That's right. Because there are way, way too many games that are released and they are not freaking done at all! <laughs> okay, it's not possible for one person to write that much. But splitting a story between so many people has drawbacks. It can make the tone of the roots inconsistent, or the character's personalities might change slightly. Some writers rely more heavily on internal monologue, others favor dialogue, and others like long extended simios. Actually, if that's how it's done, that actually might add some nice, uh, you know, way that the, actually the whole visual novel changes, right? I'd say it kind of make makes sense. If I do believe that, if you have like three roots, let's say, each root should have a, a different person writing it. Because that way, you like can have a different way of writing attached to a certain character you go after, right? And also, that way, MC, like his personality might be a bit different, which kind of makes sense. It might, like, different from different, goddammit, be a little different. Uh, with whichever girl he chooses, right? That will be good. Anyway, it can make the entire story loops lopsided, like a K that hasn't risen right. Multiple writers in the issue here for. The script is going to be short, so I can handle it all myself. I will handle it all myself. Anyway, Nekohime, come and send back with us. But I will get turned. That is the general idea. Yes. It will give your skin a healthy glow! Glow, sorry! 
What if I don't want to look healthy? Despite my protests. In before she ends up like completely brown. Like even more than Clover is right now. I still lie down beside Clover and Suki. My new work colleagues. No, that sounds far too stilted. What about friends? Yes. I think friends is far more accurate description. Ah. Clover lying on my right takes hold of one uh, of one hand. Suki on my left takes the other. We lie there for a while in still silent beneath the warm rays of the summer sun. Clover, Suki and me. Our hands linked. Our futures too. You guys. Yes? What is it? Let's put everything to this vision on the right. I don't want us to have any regrets. Whoa, this is unusually savvy coming from you. I can't help by it, I just... I want this to be special. It already is special, see? What? It's special because the three of us are together. That's right, let's keep doing our very best. Har Har and unlocked? Something like that? Right. I look between Suki and Glover and... My lips were up towards the small smile. That seems to be happening a lot lately. Much, much more than it ever used to. Being with these two girls really does make me happy. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why is this happening? Isn't that obvious, Silne Kohima? Yeah! Suki runs her head through my hair, sopping it with shampoo, I shiver. We were staying outside in the garden. Now we need to clean up. But but why are you only cleaning me? Because Nekohime! Yeah! You're repeat at cleaning up after yourself! Okay, you you make me sound like a naughty cat. No, that is quite the apt analogy. Droplets of water from the shower head pulling against my exposed skin. I can feel the reflexes cascading across my clavicles and the curve of my breasts. I don't have breasts. It feels like fingertips caressing my body. In fact, fingertips are caressing my body. Suki is standing behind me, rubbing the arc of my back with a sponge. Clover, meanwhile, has the shower head pointed at my front. Eh, this is so embarrassing. Being showered by two other women, clamped in between them like the feeling of a sandwich. Yeah, like there is anything to complain about. God damn it. So you are living the dream. Kinda, even though I'm not a fan of harems, but it's still living a dream. Anyway, really is shameful. My face flashes. To make matters worse, I can't see very well. My red rim glasses have been removed, leaving me exposed in more than one sense of the world. With my glasses, I'm completely helpless. The world around me blurs into an indistinct case of pastel cores and running water. I, 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 I can't see without my glasses. It's fine, Nekohime. You don't need to see. But um, I will take care of you. Suki leans in and closer. I feel her damp hair brushing against the nap of my neck. She whispers softly into the shell of my ear, her breath licking my skin. Very good care of you. Suki! My whole body trembles. We'll be finished in no time, Nekohime. When we're together, we're an unstoppable team. What does that have to do with showering me? Uh, I'm not sure. I was going for a cool but heartwarming angle. Like even if you can see, we can be rice. That's right. Individually, we may have flows. But together, we can make up for one another's weaknesses. Yeah! I twitch. Suki can use soak my back with the sponge while Clover wraps soap into my chest. The friction isn't actually that bad, in fact, it's kind of nice. You know, this would be a lot easier if you washed yourself properly, Nekohime. I, I, I can wash myself properly. The last time you tried, you kept your clothes on and your glasses. I, I just didn't want to take them off. That's a pain. Well, it's a good thing you have us. We'll come to you right whenever you need a helping hand. Yeah! Clover's fingers. They are massaging 
my chest. She's rubbing soap against the soft curve of my breast, creating a ladder of multicord. Soaps, but uh, soap, soap sauce. Okay. I look at her lazily, my eyes half lidded. I can hardly see properly, everything is blurry. But I do know how this feels. It feels good. Really good. Do you like it, Nekohime? Robert's voice is soft and unusually sensual, it makes the hairs at the back of my neck stand up. I, 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 I like it. It's not too intense, is it? I am. Um, I shift. Combined sensation of the water against my skin and Clover's roaming fingertips is almost all too much. I wrap my fists together. Why does it feel so warm? I am. Um, it, it feels funny. A good kind of funny? I, I, I think it's good. I think. I'm not used to feeling like this. Clover's fingers squeeze one of my nipples. I arch my back and Mel helps me. Yeah. I'm completely at her mercy, and yet. At the same time, I don't care. I don't care, but... Hey, it's no fun if you hook her all to yourself, Clover. Yeah. A jolt of electricity curses through my whole body. If I were caught, my tail would be standing up to on end. Suki. Her fingers. They. She. She's tickling the underside of my feet! Talk about the sneak attack! All is fair in love and war. But we are cramped together in the shower. I can escape. It's the best part. You beast! I look at Clover. Her features blur together, but I can more or less tell who she is. It bites my least dead giveaway. Even the large breast and my spawn is it. Clover, please help me. I'm sorry, Nekohima, but seeing you spawn is too much fun. Whatever happened to our friendship? This is horrible. Actually, let's end the episode here. It's risky because we might be close to end. Considering uh, I unlocked the fifth achievement, which means there is one more to go and one more to go if we have some rules. For well, I do think we are at the harem rules right now. Uh, somehow. Anyway. Sorry. Anywho, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.